Good day, everyone. This is Chris Bear with the uh, Ancient Scholar, and today I'm going to be uh, doing starting on a series of videos. It's going to cover the basics of ECG or EKG, the electrocardiogram interpretation. Uh, before I get into talking about all the rhythms that you can run into, let's just go ahead and uh, refresh ourselves with the basic um, anatomy and electrophysiology of the heart. Um, these are a series of photographs that I've taken off of Wikipedia. So hopefully there should be no copyright. There should not be copyright issues. So um, here I have the heart, and up here in the right atrium is where where it all starts in a, a little small group of cells. This is not obviously uh, not n not the the right actual size of the cardiac conductive system. It's actually microscopic, and really it's, uh, it's really difficult to even tell it microscopically tell it from um, all of the other uh, fibers within the heart or all the other tissues within the heart. Um, so certainly not to scale, but here in the right atrium, I have what's known as the SA node, or the sinal atrial node, and this is a node that's considered the primary pacemaker for the heart. And of course, um, the parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous system can innervate that and um, act upon that node to either to either speed up or slow down. But um, even people that have had heart transplants who have had the nervous system cut off from the heart, um, the SA node is more than capable of um, taking over as a primary pacemaker all by itself. So the SA node is the primary pacemaker of the heart. And what does the SA node do? Well, the SA node fires. And it fires at, typically it fires at its intrinsic rate. And so we'll just write up here the SA node. And it fires at right around 60 to 100 times a minute. Um, that is the normal um, intrinsic rate of firing of the SA node. So the SA node fires, and then that impulse travels through what are known as the intranodal and intraatrial pathways. Okay, this impulse travels through uh, through the atria and causes the atria to depolarize, and hopefully the depolarization will result in contraction. Uh, now, electrical activity on the EKG or the ECG does not mean that the heart is contracting, okay? It just means that I have electrical impulses going through the heart. So I can easily have a situation where I have electrical activity and no, no beating of the heart, no contraction, and that's actually known as pulseless electrical activity. So we can't assume that the heart is always beating when we see complexes. We'd like to see that, but that's not always the case. So when we look at a rhythm, an ECG rhythm on the monitor, I should have something that looks like this here. And if you see, the first little bump here is called the P wave. The P wave, what we're looking at when we look at the P wave is actually the SA node firing and um, the impulse traveling through the atria. Now once the impulse gets through the atria, it gets stopped right here at this node. And this node, um, that kind of is the dividing line between the atria and the ventricles, is known as the AV node, or the atrial ventricular node. And the AV node stalls that signal, or it pauses it, just for a brief moment of, a moment of time, and that allows the atria to contract and to pump blood in the ventricles, or preload the ventricles with blood. And that little pause of the impulse at the AV node is right here. If you see this first bump, the P wave, and then you see kind of this flat line down here, um, that is the pause as the impulse is kind of stalled there um, at the AV node, and it allows the atria to contract and fill the ventricles. Once the ventricles are filled, the impulse is then allowed to pass down through what are called the bundle branches. You have a right bundle branch and a left bundle branch, and this is in the septum and then the impulse makes its way through the ventricles in order known as the Hisperkinji fibers. Um, that impulse going through the right and left bundle branches and out through the ventricular um, or the Hisperkinji fibers of the ventricles is um, what you see when you look at this second large complex here and this is called the QRS wave. So the QRF S wave is um, ven the ventricles depolarizing, or that wave of depolarization passing through the ventricles. And then finally I have my last wave, which is called the T wave. And the T wave is repolarization of the ventricles. So the ventricles are in essence resetting. 
The atria also repolarize, but atrial repolarization occurs during the QRS complex, so it's drowned out by the QRS. So that's basically what we are looking at um, when we look at um, a basic rhythm or we look at a normal rhythm. Um, I want to go ahead and just focus on a couple of things and then I'll probably cut this video off and we'll pick it up on um, subsequent videos. So the SA node has a, an intrinsic rate of firing of about 60 to 100 times a minute. Okay. The AV node Sometimes the SA node can get taken out. It can be uh, to dr drug overdoses, to trauma, to um, damage the heart, like a heart attack or myocardial, inf myocardial infarction. If that happens, the AV node or the area around the AV node called the AV junction can take over as a pacemaker, but its set rate or its intrinsic rate is slower than the ventricle, and its set rate is about 40 to 60 times a minute. Okay. And if the AV node were to fail, the ventricles themselves, cells in the ventricles can actually take over as a pacemaker, but again, that intrinsic rate of firing is going to be much slower at 20 to 40 um, a minute. So optimally, ideally, we want to have the SA node in control of the heart. Um, otherwise, we're going to have a very slow rate, and that can, infect, that can affect... Um, the cardiac output, or how much blood is put out by the heart, and obviously that, that can affect the person. Okay. So again, um, this is the SA node here, the intranodal pathways, the AV node, you have the right and left bundle branches, and then you have the hispurkinji, uh, the ventricular fibers um, occurring. Um, the P wave is depolarization of the SA node in the atria, the QRS complex is that wave of depolarization traveling through the bundle branches and the ventricles, and then the T wave is ventricular repolarization. Um, so you should, for a normal rhythm, a normal complex, you should see a P wave followed by a QRS complex and then a T wave. And you should basically see a bump slash hump. If I see a bump slash hump, bump slash hump, bump slash hump on the monitor, that generally means that I'm probably doing okay, or generally doing okay. And when I see this bump slash hump, or PQRST complex on the monitor, and I see that at a regular interval, and I see that occurring between 60 and 100 times a minute, we call that NSR, or a normal sinus rhythm. Okay? So on the next videos, we will start talking about what the normal intervals are and what we're looking at when we actually do a printout of the ECG. Okay, guys, thanks for hanging in there.